Well, after 16 years, and likely tens of thousands of trips along with the table, none of them more than 34 inches long, the power feed on my milling machine has packed it in. Uh, it's uh, an Align model, is the manufacturer, they're made in Taiwan. And I have to say, I've been very happy with it. It uh, started acting up about two years ago and I changed the brushes and did a few things and kept it running but about a week and a half ago it finally came to the end of its life. I can't get any, the rapid switch doesn't work, neither direction works. It's completely dead. So I ordered a new one and it came in the other day and I'm going to change it out. And I thought I might show you how you do that for anyone who hasn't done this before. It should be fairly straightforward uh, because um, it's, it's an identical uh, model that I'm reinstalling. So it should be a fairly straightforward change out. Anyways, we'll give it a try. The first thing I have to get the handle off. bevel gear comes out. It actually still looks like it's in pretty good shape but the uh, new power feed comes with a new bevel gear so I'll install a new one. Let's to remove the key. And then there's just two socketed cap screws have to come out. Oh, I guess I should unhook the power. Even though it's dead, I could probably still get zapped. Now you can see here, there's a stack of shims. They, they give you a whole bunch of varying thickness and this spacer. And the idea of that is to, you know, I'll just show on the new one here. This is the new one. You can see there's the small bevel gear that comes up from the motor and the uh, large bevel gear goes in and meshes with that and they, those shims that you see there are actually used to space this bevel gear from that bevel gear to set the backlash. However, the instructions that come with this power feed give absolutely no information on how to set the backlash. In fact, if you want to see something funny, I'm going to show you one of the pages in these instructions and it's worth it to pause the video and read these safety instructions. I've never seen such a bad translation to English. Let's see if you guys can, if I can get them all in. If I go back out and I'll hold it there. You'll have to pause the video to read them all, but they're uh, pretty abysmal. So I'll probably just do it by feel like I did when I installed them 16 years ago. Make sure they're not too tight and uh, not too loose. And likely what I'll do is I'll just keep that same shim pack in that came with the original one and see how it works. Ooh, 
coat. Get as much of the old grease out as I can. I have to say, this has been a really good power feed. It's been essentially maintenance free right up until about two years ago when I started having trouble with the motor. Now I'm going to keep the same shim pack to, for the first trial, but this is a new bearing space that came with it. I thought I would change it. And then just slide on. Like that. And then I'm going to add some grease. Okay, and that's in place, it's good and solid. Now the new bevel gear comes with some grease on it, but I don't really think it's enough. So I'm going to just add some of this grease that I have. To be honest, I don't know if I ever greased this thing in the 16 years I had it, and yet when I just disassembled it, it still had plenty of grease on it. And the grease was pretty good shape. The gear hasn't bro didn't break down at all in all that time, mm -hmm. so it must be fairly well made. And then I put the key back in. This is actually the original from the machine itself. You just reuse it when you add the power feeds. It's a bit of a redundant uh, part because I have digital readouts on my milling machine. I never look at the micrometer dials, but um, you need it to space the components out properly on the shaft. So. Which is original handle from the machine goes on. And then this nut goes back on. And then I'll just, once I get it tightened up, I'll see how it feels for backlash on the bevel gear. shims and the old one did. Turned out my problem was I had too many shims in the stack. It wasn't that there wasn't enough. Um, and it wasn't engaging with the gear properly. Um, one thing I just realized while doing this, to set the backlash, because they give you no instructions whatsoever how to do it, 
Um, I think probably the easiest way is to put this bevel gear on the shaft without the key so that it rotates freely and then push it in until it engages with the pinion. And then what you have to do is make sure the power's off and engage this so that the pinion locks and then you can feel it. Um, you can hear it. There's, I'm not sure if you can see it, but there's very little backlash now. Um, uh, yet, when it's disengaged, it turns pretty smoothly. So I think I have probably the right amount of backlash. Again, they don't give you any indication how much is enough. Earlier I had said that the micrometer dial needs to be installed to act as a spacer, and it turns out that's not correct. That was wrong. You could leave the micrometer dial off completely because it's the handle that pushes the gear on and holds it in place. Um, however, I kept it on. Um, there's also a set of shims for this here because when you go to <clears throat> install this, it's possible, and I don't think it's doing this, yeah, it just is, it's, whoops, it's possible for this surface to rub on the case of the power feed. So, and I believe that's what's happening there. So they give you some shims that are obviously larger. So you just put those on. They might still be touching. Anyways, you just, they give you a bunch of them. And you just add them until you get the clearance you want. These shims come in all different thicknesses, so you can have a pretty fine adjustment. Although on this part, it's not all that critical, I don't think. As long as it's not touching and not sticking out too far. There, I think that's good. So I think I got the right amount of spacers in there. I think I could maybe take one more out. No, I don't think I can. Okay, good enough. So now, hopefully this is the last time I do this. Ian. The bevel gear in. Micrometer dial and shims in. seated on the pinion gear. The retaining nut, the micrometer dial. Mug this up. Hmm. <laughs> you know what? Counter wheels.
Okay, I'll have to put one more shim in here, but uh seem to be as fast as my old one, but that could be just my imagination. Anyways, all that's left to do now is to change out the stop switch. This is still the old one. Um, the new one comes pre-wired and all you have to do is remove the bubble wrap and it's just held on with two socketed cap screws just like that so it's pretty straightforward the new one comes with new stops in the bag but they're identical to the old ones and there's nothing wrong with the old ones so I'm just going to leave them as is and reuse them but other than that, I think that was took me about 45 minutes, including screw-ups. So not too bad to change out. And hopefully this one will last as long as the first one. Thanks for watching. Bye.